Welcome to Family Church. We are a diverse, spirit-filled, life-giving church, healing hurts, building relationships, and developing leaders. My name is Pastor John Mark, and I'm so excited that you decided to connect today. Right now, grab something to take notes with as we begin today's message. How are we all doing today? Who here, you woke up easy on the good side of bed? Who woke up on the snoozing? Don't sound too bad right now. It's like... Yes, I've definitely been there on both sides. Uh, Before we jump into today's sermon, I just want to give a shout out to the worship team here at Family Church. You might not realize it, but every single Tuesday and sometimes even extra times on the weekend, they're spending at least four hours together praying, practicing, so that every week, just maybe even one person might have an encounter with Jesus through worship. So let's give it up for that worship team one more time. And today we're going to be kicking off a new series titled A Summer's Journey. We're going to be talking about journeys through the Bible all throughout the month of June and July. So if you're interested in journeys, this will be the sermon for you. So talking about journeys, I have a question. Who here, you would rather take a flight than a road trip? All my flight people, raise your hands. Who here is a road trip type of person? Look, it's not about the destination. <laughs> it's about the, the journey. And I agree, I do. I'm a journey to the airport. <laughs> I'm a journey with TSA pre-check, because I ain't waiting. I'm a journey onto the plane. Carry on only, we don't got time to wait. I'm a, sto- I'm a journey into sleep on the plane, and then I'm going to get to my destination. For those of you who love the road trip rather than the flight, if we're being honest, life is a lot more like a road trip than it is a quick flight. You understand that a flight is usually like, we're there, we're at our destination, we're going. A road trip, usually the stress starts the night before. Do we have our, do we have our, do we have our, do we have our, and you're going and you're like, oh, I forgot this. And then you're going, and you're like, who's hungry? You're like, let's just keep going. I have to pee. <laughs> I asked you 17 times, did you have to pee? I didn't have to five minutes ago, but now I do. <laughs> There's going to be people you meet along the journey. There's going to be times you stop to refuel. Life is like a road trip. And if we're being honest, our faith journey can feel a lot like a road trip as well. That in this walk with God, this journey with God, there's going to be ups, there's going to be downs, there's going to be times that we don't know where to turn. We might feel like we've made a wrong turn. You're going to meet some great people along the way. You might meet some long-term friends, some temporary friends. There's a lot of things that go into this journey called faith. And on this road trip called faith, one thing that's really good to know is that God does all the work. If you're going to drive on a road trip, what do you need before you can start driving? You need a car and to pee. Amen, whoever said that. You need a car and you need to pee, right? In this journey with God, in terms of our faith, God is the one who builds the car. He's a manufacturer. He delivers it to us. He makes sure the engine is ready. He makes sure the transmission's ready. God gets everything, the vehicle, together ready for the trip. God takes care of everything. And we might feel like it's all about us, but in reality, we've got a little role to play. And our little role to play is not like God is like, I cannot do anything without humans. It's like uh, you ever let a little kid help you out on something you can do by yourself? It's like, I need someone real strong to move this chair. And they're like, do you, you don't need the kid to move the chair, but you understand that it is encouraging when a kid gets to play a part in the story. And on this journey with God, we do play a part in the story. That God does all of the work, but he asks us to bring something with us known as faith. Everybody say faith. faith. On this road trip called faith, 
God brings everything that we need. He supplies everything that we need. All things that pertain to life and godliness belong to us. And he says to bring this thing called faith. The issue with faith is that it's not based on what we can see with our natural eyes. It's not based on our own perfect reasoning. Who here knows that sometimes your reasoning can fail you? That you have a really good idea, something makes perfect sense, and then you do it and you're like, oh Lord. A lot of times it's, I wish I would have listened to my parents. Because I thought I had it all figured out, but I didn't. And the reality is, if life is a road trip and God is saying, all right, this car needs just one more tire, and then we're going to get onto the road. And God says, I need you to trust me with that tire, all right? I've got you covered. God says, you got to trust me on this one. And we say, Lord, we're supposed to be going on a road trip, and I'm not seeing a tire on this car. So all you've given me is this little shadowy thing, and I don't know what's underneath here. So God, instead of going with that shadowy thing, I got you. Lord, I've got it all figured out. I've got a tire for the road trip. And yes, I was driving my car when this happened. Real bad. And we say, Lord, I've put the pieces together for what we need for this road trip. You're like, look what I got. Lord, what do you think of my plan? He's like, ah, I've been a mechanic for a long time, son. I don't know if your plans are going to be able to take you where you need to go. He's like, I don't know if your plans are going to make the journey to where you need to go. So when it comes to faith, faith can feel a lot like this. With my eyes, I don't know what's underneath this. But God is telling me that he's going to provide the thing that I need. But I need a tire, and I have one. I've already got it figured out, God. And a lot of times on this, this road trip called our faith, there's going to be a moment where we think we've got it figured out with our plans, and God is telling us, I need you to trust me. I need you to trust me. We can say all day long, God, I've got the details for what needs to happen for this plan. But many times, and really all the time, the best option is to place our trust in God. Amen. We say, God, I want to have faith in the things that I can see with my own two eyes. But the reality is that faith is not based on what we see. It's based on the God that we serve. And faith says, even though I don't see what I think I should be seeing, because I know who God is, I'm going to place my trust in him. So as we're going throughout today's message, this tire on my right is going to represent the things that we can control, the things that we can see, the things that make sense to us. And this veil that we have no idea what's underneath, ding! It's going to represent what God has in store for us. We might not know how God is going to do what he's going to do, but we do know him, and knowing him is enough. This is the heartbeat of faith. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 says this, For we walk by and not by. For we walk by and not by. For we walk by. And not by, there's a man named Abraham in the Bible. And it's Abram, Abraham, they're the same character. And he finds himself in a situation where he has to walk by and not by. And this man, Abram, he's getting called by God into the unknown. Genesis chapter 12 verse 1 says this. The Lord had said to Abram, go from your country, from your people, and from your father's household to a land I will show you. He doesn't say, I'm sending you to Newburgh. He doesn't say, I'm sending you to White Plains. He says, pack up your stuff and go to the land that I will show you. My question today is how do you respond when God is calling you into the unknown? 
How do you respond when God is calling you into the unknown? And the first sermon that we're going to do in this series on journeys is the journey into the unknown. Let's pray today. Father, we come before you today in Jesus' name. And Lord, we thank you so much for this opportunity that we have to hear your word. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would speak to the hearts and minds today of every person within the sound of my voice. I thank you, Lord, that you would strengthen us to journey into the unknown, not because we're confident in what we can do, Lord, but because we are confident in you alone who is worthy of our praise. I thank you for these things. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So Abraham, or Abram, he's actually one of the most prominent figures in the Bible. And you would expect, if he's one of the most important figures, that we would have a long introduction of him. And the reality is that we don't. In Genesis chapter 11, we see his family lineage, like who his father is. We see where he lives. And then we learn that his wife named Sarai, or Sarah, that she's unable to have children And then we jump right into Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, where it says this. The Lord had said to Abram, go from your country. Everybody say country. Country. From your people and your father's household. And then he says this weird statement to a land I will show you. Who here would be comfortable with hearing that? A land I will show you. Who here will get an attitude if your spouse is like, we're going on a surprise date and I'm not going to tell you the restaurant. Like, I need to know. I need to know. Because there are things that I need to account for, right? We, We sometimes have a hard time trusting about a meal. How much more about move your entire life upside down? Even me, if I heard that, I'd be like, What do you mean you will show me? Will show me. And there's an important lesson in this very first here, very first verse here, that God is not just calling Abram to go somewhere new. He's not just calling him out to go somewhere by faith. He's also asking him to leave a few things behind. He says, go from your country, the place where you're comfortable, your people, those who have been around you, and your father's household. If you understand anything about a biblical lineage, is that everything always traces from the father's household. And now God is asking him to leave the thing that he's been in his whole life. What I love about God is he's not just calling Abraham to go and do something. He's also saying, I need you to trust me and leave a few familiar things behind. The reality is, if God is calling you into the unknown, it is not his way of saying, let me throw you off path. It is God's way of saying, let's get right where you need to go. He's saying, let's take a journey exactly to what I have for you. Here's the thing, and we understand it on a car. You cannot have two tires taking up the same place on a car. If this tire is on the car, there's no room for anything else. And if God comes to you and he's speaking to you like, here's what I have in store for you. And we're saying, but look what I got. I've got something already. And we go and we're putting a flat tire on our life. Think about it. To fully trust only in your abilities is to put a flat tire on your life. The reality is this tire cannot contain any sort of air. Our plans cannot contain what God has in store for us. So as we're thinking about trusting God throughout this sermon, trust is not a negative thing. Trust is what is going to set you ahead and to get what God has in store for you. We might say, but I have nothing to work with. All I have is this tire. And you're asking me to give up this tire. You're asking me to give up this plan that I have, but you've shown me nothing. But let's keep on reading of what happens when God calls somebody into the unknown. Genesis chapter 12, verse 2. God says to Abram, I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. 
I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So my first question is, does that passage we just read, is it all focused on what Abraham's able to do? No. It's about what God is able to do. God says, here's what I'm going to do. And many times on this journey called life, we think that it's all about what we're able to do. Where with this story, the journey into the unknown is never about your ability. Because think about it, we're not going to be able to navigate the unknown on our own. And the reason why we often avoid the unknown is because we know that we can't just rely on our own ability. So rather than rely on God, we say, I'm going to hold on to my plans. And I'm going to keep things my way. We see right here that God does not leave Abram empty-handed. But he puts into his hand something known As promises. So the journey into the unknown is not a journey where there's nothing in your hand. God is not leaving you empty handed. In fact, he's giving you something better than your own plans. He's giving you his word. He's giving you his promises. The reality is that God's promises will always outperform your planning. God's promises will always outperform your planning. Like we said, your your plans cannot contain what God has in store for you. And we see that one reason why Abraham or Abram or really many any Bible hero is so prominent is because when God speaks, they take him at his word. This promise that the Lord gives to us, it guarantees whatever's under here. So even though I cannot see what's under here, I can have the word of the one who's speaking, which I might as well as have it. It's the same thing. So with faith, when God says it's yours, it is automatically as real as the stage that I'm standing on. That is the nature of faith. You might have heard of faith as like a blind trust. That is not what the Bible teaches. Faith is not trust without reason. Faith is trust because God is the greatest reason in existence. Faith is an extreme confidence, not a lack of confidence. That because I know the one who said this, it is a guarantee. That is the nature of faith. We see with Abram over and over again, when God speaks, he follows him. Genesis chapter 12, verse 4. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot with him. It says, Abram was 75 years old when he was sent out. 75. He was 75 years old. So newsflash, don't think that God is done with you. Don't think that you've aged out of being used by God. Because if God can use a donkey to speak on his behalf, he could use any of us. It says that Abram traveled through the land as far as the the site of the great tree of Morah at Shechem. And at that time, the Canaanites were in the land. Verse 7, so we understand that Abram, he's now on this journey with God. So God said, I'm calling you to go to a land. And Abram, he takes the promise and he begins to walk. Verse 7, it then says something weird. The Lord appeared to Abram and said to your offspring. Everyone say offspring. Offspring. Fancy name for children. He says, to your offspring, I will give this land. So it says that he builds an altar there to the Lord and worship. But in Genesis 11, it says that Abram's wife, Sarai, was barren. She wasn't able to have children. So Abram, he leaves behind this plan. He takes the promises up, and he begins to walk. 
And one thing that I want us to catch today is that on this journey into the unknown, that God calls them to walk with the promise. He's like, I'm going to give you a land. But God then says, hey, Abram, I I updated the promise. There's offspring that you're going to have. So as Abram is walking with God on this journey into the unknown, God is opening up new possibilities. He's opening up new realities. This is the journey into the unknown. Sometimes we have this mindset that, all right, I'm going to trust God once, and then I'll never have to trust him again. But the journey into the unknown goes on for our entire life. But the thing is, when we realize that, well, my flat tire didn't work in 2015, and it didn't work in 2016, and it didn't work in 2017, 2018, I said, all right, I'm going to trust the Lord, and things move forward. And they move forward. And in 2020, I thought I was smart. So I went and I grabbed my tire again. And how did that end up? On the side of the road. So I was like, all right, AAA showed up. God showed up and he sent me back on the right path. So this journey of faith, it's not once and done. It's every single day that we're relying on God. We see that God is taking Abram over and over and over again into these new places. And we're not going to go into a lot of detail, details today. I might be giving off the impression that Abram gets it perfect, and he doesn't. Abram messes up a lot. In fact, he goes into Egypt, and the Pharaoh, the king, sees how beautiful his wife is. And the king asks Abram, he's like, who's that? He says, oh, that's my sister. Sarah, go ahead. Sis. You want want me to die? Go ahead, sister. Yeah. Yeah, we got the same last name and everything. So, you know, that's my sister. And we see that Abram actually makes a good amount of mistakes. But we see that God still blesses him anyways. That doesn't make sense either. The reality is in this journey into the unknown that God's provision is not dictated by your performance. God's provision is not dictated by your performance. It's dictated by his faithfulness. The story of Abraham is not about him earning anything. It's a story of what happens when we trust God and take him at his word. We see over and over again that Abram, although he messes up, he still gets it right. He messes up, but he still gets it right because he stays on this journey with God. Don't think in your walk with God that when you mess up, like, now I'm way off path. No, you're on the journey still. You're making progress still. Don't be so hard on yourself about the little details that you get stuck missing the whole picture. Like Natasha said at our Wednesday night Bible study, how often are we so focused on a tree that we miss the whole forest? We're so zoomed in on one specific mistake that we made, we're like, we're missing the whole picture of what God is doing in our lives. Why was Abram able to keep walking forward? 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7, for he walked by faith and not by sight. He walked by faith and not by sight. Pastor Josh, what, how can I use this in my day-to-day? Because sometimes the day-to-day feels like a struggle. Nobody said trusting God was easy. You know what I think is even harder for Abram than trusting God? It's telling his wife we're going nowhere. <laughs> Where are we going? God's going to show us. That's difficult, but he was able to walk by faith and not by sight. The first point that I want to make today is that there is power in perspective. There is power in perspective. If we're trying to figure it out and focus on all the details we have, we are taking a natural perspective. But the perspective of faith is not fixated on what we know, what we can do. It's fixated on What is God speaking? Genesis 15, 4, it says, Then the word of the Lord came to him, Abram, 
and said, This man will not be your heir, but a son who is your own flesh and blood will be your heir. He then took him outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars. So God says, I need you to change what you're looking at to understand what I'm about to say. And some of us need to change what we're fixated on in order to, in order to receive what God has in store for us. That we need to look up and fix our eyes on what God says. He says, if indeed you can count them. Who knows, you, he's not going to be able to count all the stars. He's like, Abram, what I'm about to do, you can't even count up to it. You can't even reason your way to it. Then God says, so shall your offspring be. Sometimes we need to look up. Sometimes we need to look up a Bible verse that we're going to stand on. Sometimes we need to look up the people around us and listen to their stories of God's faithfulness. It can be very difficult sometimes to read the Bible and like really believe by faith. Like, you know what? God is going to do this in my life. Sometimes when I'm really struggling, I just need to hear somebody else's story of God's faithfulness. So share your story of how God is working in your life as well. You never know how it can change somebody's future. One thing that's so important today is that if you feel like God is asking you or calling you to do something impossible, good. It sounds a lot like him. That sounds a lot like God. There are many impossible things in the Bible, but God specializes in the impossible. If we operate with this perspective that we're going to make sense of it, we're going to end up stuck on the side of the road. But when we operate on the perspective that God is trustworthy, that's when we truly start this journey. Even when we're scared. Like it's okay to be scared, but do it scared. Do it scared. There are people, Psalms throughout the Bible, where the author is scared, they're terrified. Yet, I will trust in the Lord. The second point today is that who is greater than what? Who is greater than what? The God who is with you is greater than any circumstance you can face. The God who is with you is greater than the struggles, than the what's that we find in our lives. One thing that is amazing about Abraham as we go throughout his journey is that he had such a relationship with God that he would create scenarios of crazy impossible things in his mind and says, God can do that. As we continue on this story, Abram has this child and his, his Abram's name is changed to Abraham. And this child's name is Isaac. And we see that Isaac, that God says, I need you to trust me with your son. Lay him on an altar and sacrifice and make and sacrifice your child back to me. And in my mind, when I read that story, it's like, well, Abram believed or Abraham believed that, well, God gave me a son before. So if I end up killing this son, then God will just get pregnant again and he'll give me another child. But that is not what Abraham believed. Listen to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 17. By faith, Abraham, when God tested him, tested him, he offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had, I'm going to hold this, it says Abraham embraced the promise. He who had embraced the promises was about to sacrifice his one and only son. Even though God had said to him, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. Verse 19, Abraham reasoned that God could even raise the dead. And so in a manner of speaking, he did receive Isaac back from death. He had such a confidence in God that he said, even if I kill this child, God has the power to raise him from the dead. That is the faith that Abraham had. Now, this was in Genesis chapter 12. In Genesis chapter 1 to 11, there is not a single resurrection in the Bible. There is no evidence at this part of the story that God raises people back from the dead. 
But we see in the New Testament that there are stories in the Old Testament as well as in the Gospels where God raises people from the dead. Like the disciples, they all saw a man named Lazarus rise from the dead, right? And guess what? When Jesus died, the disciples thought it was over. So the disciples saw with their very own eyes that God can raise people from the dead. But when Jesus died, they didn't have the faith to believe it. Abraham had none of that. But he had such an understanding of who God was, he had faith for what the disciples couldn't even see. They walked with Jesus and they didn't see it. But guess what? Abraham walked with Jesus as well. And Jesus says, Abraham rejoiced to see my day. Now Abraham was dead a long time, but through the lenses of faith, he saw something that others, even in the day of Jesus, couldn't even see. This is the confidence and the boldness of faith. The only reality that Abraham saw in this story was the reality of his spiritual eyes. He could say, yeah, it looks like I might lose my son. But the reality is, if God said it, he can bring him back from the grave. If God said he's the one who's going to be my lineage, then God can just as easily raise him back from the grave. Number three, faith is the foundation of freedom. Faith is the foundation of freedom. Hebrews 11.8 says this, that by faith, Abraham, when called to a place he would later receive as an inheritance, he obeyed and he went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were his heirs with him of the same promise. So the promise, it didn't just stay with Abraham, but we have this image that it goes generation to generation. Verse 10, for he was looking forward to the city with foundations whose architect and builder is God. So he saw something. He said, whoa, 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 whoa. There is such a future that God is saying right now. So it's like, whoa, based on what God is saying, there is something much greater down the line. And I get to be a part of the story right now. And it's still happening today. It's happening in Middletown right now. At Family Church right now, we all have a part to play in this story. Verse 11, and by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children because she considered him God faithful who had made the promise. You know that your faith can be contagious? That people can see what happens when you place your trust in God and they can catch that bug? It's like, well, if it worked for him, if it worked for her, if it worked for Susie, then maybe I should take this journey into the unknown. Verse 12, and, from, and so from this one man, and, ha, and he as good as dead, like his body wasn't working, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as countless as the sand on the seashore. You never know how your single act of obedience can change generations after you. You never know how a single act of obedience could change generations that follow after you. As we end today's sermon, there were many impossible situations that faced Abraham and Sarah. And the reality is they messed up a lot. But it is their faith in God that ultimately set them free. You see, faith is the key to the prison you've been living in. This is prison. Being in control is a form of prison. He's like, hey, you're in prison. Yeah, but at least I can control. Now that, I'd rather live in a prison that I'm comfortable in than journey into the, an unknown freedom. Where the only way, if we're being honest, to make it from here to there is that we've got to trust in what God is speaking. It's not a natural journey. It's not I can work hard enough to make it here. It's not by our works ever. 
It wasn't fireworks in the story of Abraham, and it certainly is not now. And I simply want to ask a question today as we close. What would it look like if a church in Middletown, New York, decided to all follow in the footsteps of Abraham? What would the Walmart on 211 look like? A little less crazy? I think so. I had someone tell me, he's like, I don't go into Walmart after 10 p.m. <laughs> like, too, too much risk. What would it look like if each one of us followed in the footsteps of Abraham? How would our workplaces change? How would our homes change? How would our cities change? How would our family lineage change? He says to Abraham, verse 12, the Lord had said to Abram, go from your country. What is the area of your life where you're real comfortable? Where is your country today? Where is the place where God is saying, I'm calling you out to somewhere greater? It's not easy, I promise you. I'm not saying it's easy, but I promise it will be worth it. Placing your trust in God will be worth it. Now I'm going to do a little magic trick. It's quick. Would anyone like to guess what's underneath this tire? Would anyone like to guess what's underneath this tire? I was going to act like I did that on purpose, but it's all right. Now, for being honest, was anyone surprised that there was another tire sitting under here when there's a round thing and I'm talking about a busted tire? Who here is surprised by that? That's like, oh, a tire. I never thought of that. <laughs> now, that feeling right there, that's faith. Even though there's a veil over it, I can see it already. Because I know the one who spoke. The Bible says that faith is like a confidence in the things that are unseen. I don't need to see it with my two eyes to know that it's already there. Because I know the one who is speaking. As we close today, I want to take a little bit of time to pray that we would have this confidence to place our trust and our faith in God. And I want to do something a little bit different. Everyone, let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes. If you're here today in this idea of a journey into the unknown, it's something that scares you, you want to do it, you want to place your trust in God, and you just feel like you're stuck, I want you to go ahead and wave at me real quick. And I'm going to pray for you. If you struggle with this, this idea of placing your trust and hope in God, I see all of you. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, we come before you today in Jesus' name. And Lord, I thank you for every person that raised their hand in an act of faith. Lord, I thank you that in asking for help, Lord, that that was the first step on this journey into the unknown where we may not know what the future holds. We may not know what the plans are in store. We may not know how you're going to do what you do, God, but we know you, we know your voice, we know your word, and that is enough. I pray, Holy Spirit, that faith would rise up on the inside of us, that we would have the gift of faith and that we would take you firmly at your word. I thank you, Lord, on this journey into the unknown, that although we might not see it with our natural eyes, God, that we would see it through the Holy Spirit. I thank you, Lord, that we're sealed and that you're helping us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And I want to pray a second prayer today where you're saying, you know what? In my life, maybe I've been living in this prison of doing it on my own. You've never made a decision to place your trust and give your life over to Jesus Christ. If you want to make that decision today, we all pray this prayer together. Go ahead and pray it with me. Say, dear God, I come to you today just like I am. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord 
and my Savior. Jesus, I believe that you died and rose for me. Come into my heart. Come into my life. Change me. Make me new. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. My name is Pastor John Mark, and I'm so glad we were able to connect together today. If this impacted you in any way, I need you to do a few things for me. I need you to like and subscribe to this channel and head over to FamilyChurchNY.com to take your next steps.